I have been fortunate to work with the 50th Anniversary Committee, which includes Greg Bat Brown, Bill Schmidt, Pete Van Loon, as well as uh, Jim Matteau and Lou Sorensen. So we've got almost all the former executive directors and people that have been involved with the commission, as well as staff input, and we've asked for other input along the way. Because as you'll hear tonight, we've had a very exciting history. We were the first regional commission in the state of Vermont, and we really, you know, a lot of really interesting things with the environmental movement happen here as well. Um, we will have, oh, between now and November, a series at the commission that we have been fortunate enough to get BCTV to come and film, so it's not just a small group listening to it, but we'll be able to put it together and kind of save it for future generations. So tonight, um, we'll have Bill and Corky talking about the founding and the origins. Next month, we'll have WRC and Act 250. Um, I believe the following month is Human Services. We've given birth to an awful lot of organizations that a lot of organizations that are in existence don't even realize that we had a hand in their, their establishment. Uh, we're also going to talk about uh, natural resource planning in Wyndham Regional Commission, transportation planning, um, Act 200, which will be very interesting with Greg Brown and Lou Sorensen on different sides <laughs> of the coin. Um, and we're going to finish it all up. I'm probably missing a couple of subject matters, but we're going to finish it all up about the future of the Wyndham region and have a panel discussion. So it's going to be a very interesting year ahead. Um, in June, we're still firming it up, but it looks like we'll probably have a celebration in, at the Putney School. Um, and we're waiting to hear whether or not the governor can fit it into his busy schedule. So welcome Corky and Bill. They really had a big hand in the establishment as, as well as others, but they have, they have a lot to talk about, and I'd invite you to come up and speak about the uh, origins and the beginnings. Thank you. Well, we're talking about the 60s, folks. <laughs> and Bob Dylan had a song called Times They Are Changing, and they certainly were a changing. I arrived in Brattleboro uh, as a town manager on November 1st of 1960. Two weeks later, on the 15th of November, Exit 3 was opened from Exit 1. And that really opened up the North Brattleboro area. There was already water and <clears throat> that went as far as what is now the Full Flex plant no sewer at all in the area, so that retarded development for a while. But in the late 60s, the town did extend the sewer line all the way to the uh, Dummerston line, and that really exploded uh, North Brattleboro, and it's what we're living with today. Some of it was well planned, some of it not so well planned, as we know. Meanwhile, Governor Hoff was talking about regional planning and the fact that he would like to see regional planning take place in Vermont. That tickled the interest of three of us in Brattleboro. Uh, Dick Sykes was the president of uh, BDCC at the time and he thought a regional plan, planning organization would be great for economic development. John Hooper was the chair of the, plan, the Brattleboro Planning Committee, and he thought that it would be good for town planning. I was the town manager, and we needed a, uh, a regional agency to certify that a town plan was was acceptable in order to receive federal funds. Well, we had just organized the Brattleboro Housing Authority, and we needed money to start building Melrose Terrace. So we all had a different motivation, but we all had the, the idea that this was the way to go. So we started. In the fall of 1964, the three of us literally barnstormed the county. 
and we visited most of the boards of selectmen to, to try and, and uh, educate them a little bit about what we were talking about and hopefully convince them that this would be a, a good idea. On December 29th of 1964, 70 people from 13 of the towns did attend a buffet uh, at, in, at the Putney Inn. And Sykes and Hooper and Elwell urged those present to convince their board of selectmen to place a resolution to join the Regional Commission on March 1965 town meeting warning. On January 14th of 1965, we had an open meeting at, at the BUH, uh, BUHS High School uh, with Al Moulton, who was then commissioner of the Vermont Development Department. And at that meeting, we did develop a steering committee formed of 23 people uh, representing 17 of the Wyndham County towns and prepared an estimated budget, hear this, $41,310. <laughs> For two years. <laughs> yeah. At the 1965 town meeting, this, are, this is the result. We had 15 town vo towns that voted yes. Brookline, Dover, Halifax, Grafton, Londonderry, Marlborough, Putney, Wyndham, Newfane, Townsend, Vernon, Whitingham, Wilmington, Rockingham, and Stratton. And Brattleboro uh, approved it later in March. We have the representative town meeting, so that happened. And for some reason, Athens also had their meeting later in March, and they approved it. So we had 17 towns with an affirmative vote to form a Wyndham County Planning Regional Commission, the first regional planning commission in Vermont. And this was a real leap of faith because Governor Hoff's proposal had not even passed the legislature at that point. <laughs> that didn't happen until May when they were really putting the bucks behind uh, what, what these folks had the, the courage to go ahead and say, we're going to do it. The first organizational meeting happened in, on April 12th of 1965. Didn't waste much time. Twelve of the 17 towns were represented, and Dick Sykes was elected chairman pro tem. And then later, on May 27th, 1965, was the first full meeting of the Wyndham Regional Planning Commission and Alden Hort Horton of Wilmington uh, was elected chairman and bylaws were adopted. And I think at this point, I'll turn it over to Bill Schmidt and he can pick it up and tell you what happened with the real organization of this, this uh, organization. <laughs> Thank you. I have to say that Corky and Dick Sykes and John Hooper did a a uh, magnificent job in meeting with the various boards of selectmen. They were called boards of selectmen then, not select persons. Uh, and there were very few women on boards at that time. Uh, this is 60s. Uh, uh, and there were, so uh, what followed then uh, from the May 27th uh, organizational meeting was a follow-up meeting and in on, on June 29th at, at which bylaws were adopted uh, and a grant application to HUD uh, federal agency for 701 planning funds was made the application uh, which included uh, two-thirds of the money from HUD, two-thirds of this 44,000 Corky Mansion, and the remaining third would be split by the state and the towns. Uh, and that uh, application went in at that time. 
so we had 17 towns to start with. There were three towns that voted not to come into the commission, Westminster, Guilford, and Wardsboro, and two towns passed over the article, Dummerston in Jamaica. Uh, all of those towns subsequently did come in uh, in the next two or three years, and by the end of the 60s, uh, Weston and Winhall uh, also uh, came in. Reedsboro came in sometime in the early 70s, and in the late 70s or early 80s, Searsburg came in. Uh, now, some of these towns, like Searsburg, came in for a year or two and then opted out. And, uh, uh, they were in long enough for us to help them get a town plan, and that was about it. <laughs> uh, so, what was, now let me just give you a, a brief word on, on, on me uh, so you know where I'm coming from. So I came to Vermont in 1961 and uh, lived in Putney for four years. Uh, I was the minister of the Federated Church in Putney. And the four years went to 1964 and I was one of the 23 people who worked with Corky Elwell and company to try to get, in this case, Putney uh, to join the reg regional commission. Uh, I was successful <clears throat> and I was named a commissioner from Putney. And uh, as commissioner, uh, I also uh, became secretary of the bo uh, first board of, of, the, of the commission. And I, I was really into the commission. So in the second year, uh, I moved to Rockingham from Putney between 1965 and six. And when I moved to Rockingham, I was able to talk that board of selectmen into naming me commissioner from Rockingham. And I became chair of the commission that year. And then in 1967, uh, I left the job that I had then, uh, the job I had, I left the church job in 65, went to work for Sevka. Uh, I was one of two staff people. We were the startup of Sevka. The other was Tom Davis, the son of Dean Davis, who was governor. So Tom and I worked for a, a couple of years. Uh, then I left Sevka and went to work for Planners Collaborative, the consulting firm for the Regional Commission, which I'll say more about in a minute. Worked with them for a year, year and a half, and then when the legislature in 68 uh, <clears throat> made money available to regional commissions to hire their own staff, uh, I was hired as executive director of the Regional Commission which job I held until 1983. So as we go through uh, this early history, uh, you see where I'm coming from. I was really into the commission. <laughs> and I have to say that that period of time, in fact, the whole of the 60s, was just a very remarkable period in our country's history and in Vermont's history. Uh, with the new governor uh, and uh, all that he got into and in, in opening up the state in all kinds of ways. Uh, so uh, here we are now in early 66. The HUD grant uh, was received. Uh, the state had made money available. Uh, toward the budget, the towns had voted their, their sums for it, and uh, we uh, set to work by hiring Planners Collaborative of Syracuse, New York, uh, a consulting firm that had done actually quite a bit of work for the state uh, by that time. Hollister Kent, Sam Kent, was the key 
person for us in Planners Collaborative. He wrote Vision and Choice, uh, vision, uh, which, which was the <coughs> Bible of the State Planning Office. The State Planning Office then was called the Central Planning Office. Uh, that was a blueprint for Vermont's f future under, under uh, Governor Hoff. Uh, so the primary purpose of the HUD grant and Planners Collaborative was to prepare a regional plan and town plans and zoning bylaws. That's what their task was. At that point in early 66, only Brattleboro, Marlboro, only Brattleboro had a town plan. And uh, Brattleboro, Marlboro, and Bellows Falls Village were the only ones with zoning bylaws. In 1970, nine towns had town plans, 21 towns had some form of zoning most of them interim zoning. Uh, Marlboro had subdivision regulations and a regional plan had been prepared and was adopted. So in those four years, uh, that work was accomplished. Uh, and all I can say is that we were very fortunate to have that kind of consulting help. Uh, I, don't, I don't know that if a resident planner had been hired in 1966, in no way could that have been done for, for then 23 towns, uh, 25 towns. Uh, in 68, a second HUD grant was received for uh, plans and, and bylaws for the new towns that had joined in the meantime. Uh, and in <coughs> 67, as I said, I was uh, hired by the by Planners Collaborative uh, to be their resident planner. Uh, did a lot of inventory work on community facilities and other subjects, and spent uh, most of my time on citizen education and participation in special studies and projects. Uh, when I came on board, we got an office, and that first office was in Bellows Falls in the Rockingham Town Hall on the second floor. And the town of Rockingham was very gracious in providing us that space. They let us use uh, the uh, office, actually, that I had been in when Sevka got started and uh, was our office then. So we were there for a couple of years. It was actually a very neat office because it was right next to the main town hall itself, the big room, which was no longer being used uh, for town affairs. But it was there, it had tables and chairs and was clean. And we had several regional commission meetings in that room where Planners Collaborative, uh, Sam would come over with a raft of maps and we'd put them all around the wall, not only of the region, but of towns. And we'd spend the whole time just marking up maps. Uh, it was a perfect space for that. Uh, in 68, the office moved to Brattleboro. Uh, that's when I became executive director uh, we were in the American building uh, up the street uh, for probably 10 years uh, and then moved to 139 Main, the third floor uh, after that. Uh, so in 1968, uh, Chapter 91, uh, the, the state planning law at that time, uh, so-called, uh, was amended to allow regional planning commissions to become regional planning and development commissions. So the WRPC became the WRPDC. 
Uh, and the legislature also voted money, as, as I said, to and allow commissions to uh, have staff and get involved in development activity as well as planning activity. And that was really important for the Wyndham Commission because there were uh, a lot of folks, uh, select persons and, and commissioners and others who wanted the commission to do more than just planning as such. So <clears throat> what happened uh, was that we got involved in in uh, all kinds of different activities and and try and thinking out on how to share g give you a bird's eye view of what all happened uh, in that vein I, I made up a list of things and then I said that doesn't really work well uh, and then I discovered that one of the few things I took with me from the 60s was uh, a year's worth of Wyndham Region news. This was the first <coughs> newsletter of the Regional Commission. Uh, the newsletter began in 1967. And uh, by 1968, it went to 900 people uh, on town boards, commissioners, anyone who wanted it. Uh, we, we would send out this four-page newsletter. And it, it, it's been fascinating for me over the last uh, week or so to go through these newsletters and uh, remind myself of, of what all was done and the people involved and so on. So what I'm going to do for a few minutes is just go through these newsletters <clears throat> and point out uh, some of the activity, some of the studies, projects uh, that were done, how people got involved, how commissioners got involved, how other people outside the commission got involved. And <clears throat> starting off, uh, well, in 65, we did a, a, public extend, a public opinion survey, which was repeated in 1970. Uh, the extension service at that point was extremely helpful. They, they helped us do these surveys. Uh, and the 1965 one, uh, we got a, a response of 1,054 uh, people responded out of a population of 34,000 at that time, which was a very good response. And, you know, that was, that uh, opinion survey was on a range of planning and development issues. Uh, uh, economic development questions, environmental concerns, uh, and, com and, and town concerns uh, felt uh, in areas like the Deerfield Valley <coughs> with the ski development that was occurring and so on. Crowded schools, <coughs> demands for more uh, and better highways by developers, and there was a whole raft of concerns. So those, those surveys were done. In uh, April, March or April 1968, our uh, Guilford Commissioner, Rodney Clark, said, gee, I wonder what the, sec the, the outsiders uh, who have property in Guilford uh, think about the town and planning and all this stuff. And so with the Extension Services help, we did a survey of outside property owners and outlanders in, in, uh, in Guilford. And there were 181 of them at that time, a much higher number than any of us would have guessed were there. And we got uh, from a, a sample of 46, 24 returns, 52 percent, and they shared their thinking about Guilford. They were in favor of planning. They did not like junk cars, pollution, posting, open, <laughs> open space loss. I mean, they, they spoke their minds. Uh, we, we had... Uh, 
we had uh, earlier that year an essay contest for high school students. And the question was, what do you want your town in the Wyndham region to be like in 25 years, in 1993? And 54 students, high school students responded. And then on top of that, uh, 25 eighth graders also responded. <laughs> And there were not, six high schools were represented and uh, there were nine, uh, quote, uh, winning essays uh, identified and the winners got $10 uh, each and, and bear in mind, at that time that was a lot of money. It was, uh, and, and also they were going to be able to sit at the table of Governor Hoff uh, when Governor Hoff came to our annual meeting in, in uh, May. And uh, that's what happened. And uh, talking about money, the, the cost for uh, that dinner for folks like all of us, 250 for that dinner. <laughs> so, so that was a neat, uh, did you, that year? did you have lobster that year? Did you have lobster that year? No, that was, that was in five years. Oh, okay. <laughs> but uh, I, I don't want to overdo the essay uh, thing, but we, we had for staff uh, at this time now uh, myself and Mary LaFontaine, a secretary. We were it for staff. And Mary took the winning essays and went through them and did up a page and a half of uh, comments in the essays, statements in the essays on what these these high school kids wanted for this region to be like. Let me just read uh, a few of them. Uh, Air pollution should be a thing of the past. Every industry should have filters on their smokestacks. Uh, no matter, nowhere, no matter how hard you search, should you be able to find a dump. They should be replaced by plants that convert all garbage and rubbish into useful chemicals and at the same time provide needed employment. Our streams and rivers should be a great source of pride uh, as a result of law, that, law enforcement that prohibits industries from dumping their waste into waters. Uh, education should be more of a joy and easier to obtain. New Union High School should be erected in the area. In every school there should be better teachers as a result of higher salaries. All billboards should be burned up so we will be able to see our land. <laughs> Uh, everyone should be able to live in a nice home. Housing developments shouldn't be crowded if properly planned. And this ends with this statement. <clears throat> There's one thing we don't want to change, people. Vermont will always be Vermont. The people here know their problems and want to do something about them. Our people are known for being friendly and God-loving. Now with all these changes, and Vermonters being the people they are, could you ask for anything more for 1993? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was a really nice project. To, uh, <clears throat> and in this vein, uh, I went uh, that year to all of these high schools and talked about regional planning and town planning. Uh, so they they had at least a glimmer of, of understanding of what of what planning was about. Uh, <clears throat> we did a survey of town boards of. Uh, well, town select boards uh, on priorities. This is in October 1968. What do you want from the commission? <clears throat> Zoning regulations, preparation or strengthening, subdivision regulations, 
uh, preparation, water and, sewer, water and or sewage facilities planning, and the making of applications for federal and state aid for, the, for these, highway planning for a new Route 9, town manager feasibility study, picture of what towns will be like in 25 years, uh, help in diversification of town's economy, help in planning school needs, a community center, a Glebe Mountain Trail, attraction of light industry, development of better public transportation and low-income housing, aid in pollution control, help in preserving rural character of town. Mm. An agenda for the regional commission. <laughs> <laughs> uh, solid waste disposal. Uh, we did a survey of select boards on their interest in solid waste uh, disposal and how it should be handled. And uh, 10 towns said they would like to have a regional approach to solid waste disposal. Uh, and in response to this uh, expression of interest, we had a regional conference on solid waste disposal later that year. Uh, problems of planning. We had a symposium on problems of planning at Wyndham College on November 2nd, uh, 1968. And problem, planning problems on the state, regional, and town level were, were discussed. Uh, Len Wilson, the Central Planning Office Director, I and Will Davison of Marlboro uh, were a panel for this discussion. Uh, housing needs were a big issue in the late 60s. Uh, with all of the new people finding their way to Vermont, uh, both to buy property for second homes and uh, others for uh, as, as tourists, skiers, and so on. Uh, we, Vermont's population was really growing. Between 1900 and 1950, the state's population grew by 2,300. Between 1960 and 67, the state's population grew by 2,000 as much almost in seven years as in the previous 50. Uh, <clears throat> Wyndham County, uh, from looking at census uh, data, in 1967 had the poorest quality of housing of any county in Vermont. Hmm. Uh, and the greatest need for housing was by those on low income and young families and the elderly. Uh, so we had a, a housing conference uh, <clears throat> on November 26th, uh, 125 people turned out for it. Uh, in preparation for that conference, uh, <laughs> I did an interesting thing uh, without even thinking about it. Uh, Governor Davis had just been elected. He was in the governor-elect uh, status at that point. He hadn't actually taken office, but he was going to within, uh, within two months or, or six weeks. Uh, so we're planning this conference, and the state, for its part, uh, was also planning a conference on affordable housing. So I just called up Governor Davis in November, early November, and I said, Governor Davis, what you know, what's your interest in the state conference? What do you feel you, you want to see accomplished? We must have talked for half an hour. He wanted a housing authority. He wanted this. He wanted, and uh, you could do that in those days very easily. Uh, so uh, housing was a big subject. Route 9 was a huge subject uh, because at that time, the New England Regional Commission was looking into the possibility of having a new uh, east-west highway from Portland or somewhere in, on the coast of Maine to Albany uh, through 
uh, Maine, New Hampshire, and Vermont. And uh, this was serious business. And some corridors had already been, potential corridors had already been selected. There were at least three in this region that had been selected. This wouldn't be uh, the, the Route 9 corridor as it exists, existed then and now. It would be a new corridor and potentially even a four-way highway through, through the state. They were also looking at central Vermont and northern Vermont. Phil Hoff was behind northern Vermont. Governor Stafford wanted it to go through central Vermont, and George Senator Aiken was pushing for southern Vermont, and Governor Davis at that point was up in the air. He hadn't decided. But so we got into that, and, and that uh, uh, <clears throat> transferred into a look at the present Route 9, and we spent quite a bit of time with state highway engineers looking at the present Route 9 and coming up with projects that should be carried out by the state uh, under what was then the state highway betterment program. And so some of the S-curves were, as a result of that, S-curves were taken out and, and uh, uh, a variety of other improvements were, were made. Uh, Rural land tax reform was a big issue. Uh, the current use program didn't exist then. We had all kinds of disparities in the way rural land was taxed. Uh, you know, if you knew the listers in your town and had a big property, chances are you'd get a break in the way they assessed your land. Uh, we saw... Uh, well, all kinds of inequities existed. So we had this conference, and uh, a lot, of, a number of these conferences were at Wyndham College, a great facility for this. Seventy persons showed up, and we met for three and a half hours. Uh, and out of that came proposals for land use taxation, in effect, the, the seeds for the current use program, which passed the legislature finally in 19... 79. Uh, farm tax stabilization was proposed. Uh, land tax deferral, which would encourage long-term ownership of rural land by enabling rural landowners to, to defer uh, tax payments uh, <clears throat> until the time uh, of sale at which a capital time a capital gains tax would be made. Uh, we got into uh, these subjects from a legislative point of view, uh, legislative being uh, state legislation. Uh, in that year, the Public Policy and Legislation Committee was formed. And it wasn't formed just to talk with legislators uh, in, in Wyndham County or the region, but to seriously propose, review legislation being proposed in Montpelier and to suggest legislation and lobby for legislation that we really believed in. Uh, Everett Childs was the, of Townsend was the first chair of that commission, uh, of that committee. Uh, we did a, uh, a regional airport study Ed Knapp, the Commissioner of Aeronautics, came down with his staff and we looked at potential sites from Vernon, all the great farmland along the river, in Vernon and Dummerston and Westminster. Uh, at that time, uh, the uh, Mount Snow Airport in Dover was just getting underway. That, that was supported. Uh, I think the only outcome of that beyond the Mount Snow Airport was Dummerston International, <laughs> so called, for, for many years as a, as a private airport. Uh, some of these subjects got continuing treatment, like the East West Highway and so on. We got into education uh, funding. Uh, the Miller formula was, was 
than the operating formula for providing state aid to schools. And there was a lot of uh, controversy over that. And we came up with a position which got presented to our legislators in Montpelier. It didn't, in this instance, go anywhere, but we had our say. Uh, the uh, Governor uh, Hoff had a uh, Governor's uh, Commission on Crime Control and Prevention. Uh, <clears throat> And we tagged onto that by having our own crime control and prevention project. Uh, we had an incredible committee. I've never seen a committee uh, cover so completely a subject as this one. Everyone from uh, police chiefs to the whole local judicial establishment, uh, the district judge, uh, <clears throat> Sheriff, State Police, uh, District Court, uh, Probation and Parole, and on and on, plus select boards, set regular citizens, and some youth. One of the, what turned out to be the biggest issue in this area was youth, police relations, and troublesome youth. Uh, drugs were a serious issue in the, in the late 60s. Uh, and uh, Jim Timmons uh, was freed up for a year by the Department of Human Services to do the initial planning project, and Brownie Toll, whom some of you may know, uh, followed it up uh, with some action. And the action resulted in the establishment of one, the Youth Services Commission, and its Big Brother, Big Sister program, and Community House in Brattleboro, uh, service for, for troubled youth. Uh, we were involved in the uh, Connecticut Valley Health Compact. Six hospitals in Windsor, Wyndham counties, and over in New Hampshire, Claremont, and so on, uh, got together and said, we want better health planning and services in the region. I must have gone to a dozen meetings uh, with Paul Stone a de former dentist in Brattleboro, uh, on, on health planning. Uh, so, winding down, the, I'll skip some of these. <clears throat> we, uh, Got involved in nuclear power uh, in two instances, and probably, no, a third one too, but I, uh, the first one was in 1967. Uh, Vermont Yankee had, had just been proposed within the previous year. And we established a committee. Uh, Arthur Westing here uh, was on the commission then from Westminster. And he was on this committee along with myself. It was really an amazing committee. Uh, it had a few commissioners, but it also had Alex Nason of, of Bradborough, who was a research radiologist, uh, Henry Schroeder, MD, uh, John MacArthur, who was a, lives still alive and living in, in Marlboro. Uh, a physicist and a teacher at Marlboro. And we came up, Arthur uncovered this report the other day, a nuclear power plant report, uh, <clears throat> December 1967. And, uh, you know, it was a serious effort to, to study the subject at that point with what limited information we had, both on, from the plant and on the subject generally. Uh, and then in uh, October 1969, we had uh, at the high school auditorium a major conference on nuclear power and the public welfare. And we had speakers at that uh, conference from the Atomic Energy Commission, uh, Vermont Yankee itself, 
the Attorney General's office, uh, <coughs> folks like uh, a professor of Earth and Atmospheric Sciences from the State University of New York. The Federal Power Commission was represented. <laughs> professor of Radiological Science from Johns Hopkins University. That was a serious discussion. Uh, and then there was another one uh, in uh, Stratton uh, the following year. So. <clears throat> when uh, 1969 uh, was winding up, uh, land development issues were really surfacing in a big way. And in uh, May of that year, uh, Governor Davis, uh, this was in his first year of office, came to Brattleboro for the first Governor's uh, Day in Brattleboro, sponsored by the Chamber of Commerce. And the Executive Board of the Regional Commission uh, had him for breakfast. Were you there, Arthur? Remember that? Uh, and I'll just say this much. Uh, this breakfast, which was to last an hour, uh, bear in mind, it was the governor, and he had all of his cabinet heads with him. Uh, and we were at the theater motel on, on Putney Road. It started at 7.30. I thought it would be over by 8.30. He had other things to do. He stayed till 9 or 9.15. He got, I never saw a person liven up to an issue so much so quickly as he did that morning. He asked question after question. And when the breakfast was over, he said, I want to come back here in two weeks and see what you were telling me about in Dover and Wilmington. I want to tour those developments. He came back in two weeks. We did the tours. We met with Dover and Wilmington officials, met with 150 people at the Red, uh, Red Mill. Red Mill. Uh, for dinner that evening, and those included town officials, developers, realtors, <coughs> bankers, all kinds. Of, and there was back and forth. And then he came back two weeks later to the commission's <coughs> annual meeting and announced, one, that he was making land development legislation his primary, one of the primary uh, uh, issues that the new Environmental Control Commission, which he had only recently established in May, uh, they should deal with land development <coughs> issues and come up with uh, legislation to deal with that, that subject. And uh, he announced, secondly, that he was forming uh, immediately a, tempor a, a temporary development uh, uh, review and advisory team to look at the proposed 2,000 acre development at Haystack in Wilmington. Uh, so that's how the decade ended. Uh, and the following May, after, after <clears throat> the legislature met and enacted Act 250 in March of that, of 1970, the governor came back to Wyndham County uh, to be the keynote speaker at a conference we had again at Wyndham College on uh, the implementation of all of these new environmental laws. Now that we've got these new laws, what are we going to do with them? And in his remarks, and if I had to say there's one paragraph that I really treasure uh, from my time as an executive director, it's this paragraph. Uh, in closing, let me express my appreciation to the WRPDC for work done on behalf of the state of Vermont. There is no organization in the state that has cooperated more closely or more effectively with my office 
in the last year than has the WRPDC. Through your efforts, we realized the land development problem in Vermont, tried out temporary solutions such as the Governor's Development Advisory Team, and had a thorough debate and discussion on the environmental package. So at the next meeting in March, uh, the subject will be the WRC's role in getting Act 250 passed and then what the WRPDC itself did to help implement the law through the 70s. Uh, so lastly, I'll just mention this document, uh, which is nice to have since the commission was the first regional commission in the state. This is a case study of the Wyndham Regional Commission from 1965 through 1970, done by the Bureau of Governmental Research and Service at the University of Oregon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and what it has in it is not only an assessment of the commission uh, for the first five years, but all of the key documents from the state planning law, our original scope of services for the first planning grant, uh, work programs, and uh, so on. Very, very good documentary. So, I overdid my <laughs>